Now we are going to discuss EPF and EPF adjustment in all the organization. In accounting, we are going to provide information about the business organization. Think there are three types of business available. A uh, trading business available and service business as well as manufacturing business. Organization can be divided by two parts. First one, profit making organization as well as non-profit organization. Think profit making organization further can be divided by three parts. Sole proprietorships, partnerships, as well as company. Think those are the business we are going to discuss on the level and those are the organization, profit making organization, non-profit organization, think sole proprietorships, partnerships, as well as company. Our duty in accounting, we are going to provide information to the interest party. Think all the business organization available interest parties, employees, customers, suppliers, managers, financial interviews, as well as government institutes. Those are called interest part of the business organization. Our duty in accounting, we are going to provide information to the interest party. Therefore, we are going to prepare financial statement. Think this is a business organization. Business organization. Our duty, we are going to provide information about the business organization to the interest party. Therefore, we have to prepare financial statement to provide information to the interest party to take decision about the business organization. As a financial statement, mainly we have discussed income statement, state fund of financial position, state fund of changes in equity, state fund of cash flow, and economic policies as less notes. Those are things we have to prepare as financial statement to provide information to the interest party. Therefore, all the business organizations, when they are going to prepare a financial statement, this is the part. From the beginning, changes in reserves of the business organization during the economic period should be recognized as a transaction and events. Second one, information should be collected by using source documents. Then, information should be recorded in the private books. Then, information should be recorded in the ledger accounts. Think general ledger. Debtors and creditors ledger. By closing the ledger account in the general ledger, you have to prepare trial balance. If trial balance is not equal error correction, then adjustment, then you have to know how to prepare financial statement. Therefore, adjustment very important parts. EPF and ADF adjustment, as well as disposal adjustment, revaluation adjustment. And bad and doubtful debts adjustment, inventory adjustment, good sent on sales or return based adjustment. Therefore, adjustment very very important. But right, today I am going to discuss how to adjust EPF and ETF. Think EPF as is ETF. For EPF and ETF, both think this is a fund maintained by the central bank. All the business organizations and available employees. Therefore, for EPF, both employee as well as employer give their contribution. EPF, both employee as well as employer give their contribution. Think employer as well as employee. Present is employee 10% as well as employer 15% based on gross salary. But ETF only employer give their contribution, employee trust fund, only employer, employment business, employer give their contribution, percentage equal 5%. Mm -hmm. Right. Think example, gross salary of the business equal to about 5,000. Example, gross salary of the business equal 5,000. Therefore, EPF and ETF should be kept based on gross salary. EPF and ETF should be calculated based on gross salary. Therefore, gross salary equal 5,000. Based on that pair of 10%. And 5,000 in 15%. As is based on 5,000 into 5%. Employer contribution for ETF. 
Therefore, here we equal to 5,000, 75,000 and 50,000. Right thing, value should be calculated based on gross salary for EPF, both employee and employer give their contribution. Right now, in the business point of view, when business is going to pay salary to the employee after deducting contribution of employee balance part paid in cash, they have think gross salary, gross salary equal 5,000, but paid in cash as a salary after deducting APF employee contribution. Therefore, deduct APF employee. Think only employee contribution should be deducted. It is equal to 50,000 from gross salary. Therefore, this is a value paid in cash as a salary to the employee in cash. It is called net salary. Think how to calculate net salary also. From gross salary, deduct employee contribution. Therefore, this is a value paid in cash as a salary. When recording in the reg accounts, you have to apply four steps. First one, net salary. Second step, employee contribution. And employer contribution. Third step, as well as APF employer contribution for these steps. Right now, think how to record the reg accounts. You have to prepare salary accounts. As well as paid in cash, cash accounts. And EPF expense accounts. EPF payable accounts and ETF also two separate ledger accounts EPF expense as well as ETF payable right salary and cash this one salary as well as cash right step number one net salary paid in cash effect for cash decrease salary is expense therefore first one double entry salary account debit as a cash and cash account credit 450 Thing value is in thousand as a salary is step number one. Second one, employee contribution also part of salary. Employee contribution equal to 50,000 part of salary. Therefore, salary account debit 50,000 as a EPF payable. That value should be transferred to central bank. EPF fund is mailed by the central bank. Therefore, salary account debit EPF payable account credit. That is a liability. EPF payable credit 50,000 as a salary. Think second steps. Employee contribution also part of salary. It should be transferred to the central bank. That is liability. Salary account debit, EP payable account credit. But in employer contribution cannot be deducted from salary. It is not part of salary. Not to pay for salary accounts. Turn the expense. Therefore, employer contribution equals 75,000. Double entry. EPF expense account debit. EPF expense account debit 75,000 as EPF payable. And EPF payable account credit 75,000 as EPF expense. Third is this. Employer contribution. It is not part of salary. Should not be deducted from salary. Turn the expense of the business organization. Therefore, it is not debit for salary accounts. But that value also should be sent to the central bank, payable to the central bank. Therefore, EPF expense account debit, EPF payable account credit. And fourth steps, ETF employer contribution, employer mean business, not to for salary accounts, cannot be deducted from salary. It is under the expense of the business, two separate ledger accounts, ETF expense accounts, ETF expense accounts. As well as ETF payable. Earn the expense of the business. Then value equal to 25,000. ETF expense account debit as ETF payable. ETF payable account credit as ETF expense. The employer contribution not paid for salary accounts. Earn the expense of the business. Right now, think there are three expenses available. Salary is expense. Any organization as a salary should be reported under administration expense. Therefore, expense account should be closed. Debit side increase. Difference value as income statement. Think like that. EPF expense also same way. All the expense account should be closed. Difference value as an income statement. Right. 75,000 also should be recorded as income statement. ETF also same way. 
ETF expense, all the expense accounts should be closed, therefore leave an answer as income statement. This is called closing entry. But then there are two liabilities available, EPA payable as well as EPA payable. EP payable, think payable account available both employee and employer contribution. Therefore, credit side total amount equal 125. Take that fellow debit side. Think difference value as a BCD. Balance carry down. Cannot be closed. All the liability should be carried down. And EP payable also same way. Credit side increase. Therefore, take credit side total value. Debit side. Difference value as a balance carry down. BCD 25,000. It should be recorded credit side as a BBF. Think EP for this one. There are five marks. Three expenses available. Salary, EPF expense and ETF expense under administration expense. But EPF payable and ETF payable, those are liability. Therefore, those values will be recorded under current liability any organization. This adjustment available all the organization. Think all the business organization available employees. Therefore, we have to discuss EPF and ETF. This is the legal requirements. Legal requirements. EPF and ETF both are fund made trade by the central bank. You have to know how to record in the business point of view. Our duty in accounting, we are going to our information. Think all the business organizations and employees available. Therefore, you have to know how to provide information about the employee. Legal requirements. Separate act available. Think percentage also. Think how to calculate values. Then think how to record in the ledger accounts. And think how to disclose in the financial statement. There are three things you have to know. First one, think how to calculate EPF and ADF. Second one, think how to record in the ledger accounts. And third one, think how to disclose on the financial statement.